One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and we are here to talk about the man that we have been talking about so frequently on this channel. Half the reason because he's going to be our next starting quarterback next year, and half the reason because this is the only free agent the Jags have signed so far this year we're talking about nick Foles. nick Foles had his first introductory uh interview press conference today and there was a lot of takeaways a lot of things that uh you could take away from that interview things that you could read on nick Foles's face things that you could you know tell from you know codwell coughlin marone as well you know things that they really enjoyed about nick Foles. there was a lot of takeaways from this press conference and i think it's going to translate a lot and translate well into the season so ladies and gentlemen that's what we are going to be talking about this is the biggest takeaways from nick Foles' introductory press conference Alrighty. so first things first something that was extremely extremely evident was that doug marone dave codwell and tom coughlin are completely in love with this guy you know when you were in middle school and you'd see the girl you had the crush on you just keep looking at her staring at her and then she'd look back at you and be like oh didn't look at wasn't looking at you that's how doug marone was looking at nick Foles. same thing with tom coughlin they're both he'd be talking and then doug marone and uh tom tom coughlin would be looking at nick Foles like oh he's gonna take us to a super bowl oh nick Nick Foles, what a guy. And you know, when when you have that confidence and that faith, uh, and maybe a little bit of a man crush on a guy, uh, you know that this team is going to do everything in its power to make sure he's successful and that the team itself is successful because they really buy into what Nick Foles is selling. They really wanted Foles on this team. That's what Foles said right when it was known that he was a free agent, the Jaguars extended out to him. And Nick Foles said that this was his first destination choice anyway. He wanted to be a Jacksonville Jaguar from the beginning after he realized he was going to be a free agent and be gone uh, from Philadelphia. So the coaches in the front office, obviously Dave Caldwell as well, were really, really in love with this guy. Like I said, like a middle school crush. And this whole press conference, you know, really solidified that. You know, he was looking at him the whole time he was talking. They were just in love with him they were in love with his answers they were in love with what he was producing they were in love with everything and that's something that they did not get with Blake Bortles you know like none of those guys really went out of their way to say how much they love Blake Bortles you know like Coughlin especially Coughlin was never much of a Blake Bortles guy Dave Caldwell is probably the only guy really there that is a true Blake Bortles guy because he drafted him and he wanted the best for him, you know, type of thing. But as for Marone and Ka, I mean, yeah, Marone, Coughlin, you know, those guys, they did not like Blake Bortles and they weren't going to really go out on a limb or look at him the same way they looked at Nick Foles. And the fact that this is how they're looking at Nick Foles, I think really, uh, helps me believe that they are going to actually switch the scheme, the offensive scheme to really, uh, rely on Nick Foles' strength and really uh, put Nick Foles in this offense in uh, winnable situations. And that is another thing that I'm going to be talking about is that I think the coaches are willing to change the scheme to fit his strength. Uh, One reporter asked Coughlin if he intends to change the scheme at all based off of Nick Foles' skill set, and he said that he doesn't think he has any problem handing the ball off, but you know, he went on to elaborate more talking about how he wants this offense to be balanced and that's what they preach and that's what they do. And uh, with Nick Foles, they think they could be a little bit more balanced. So I think that's true. I think with Nick Foles there that the Jaguars do have a more, have a better opportunity to be more balanced. And I hope by saying that he truly means that we're going to be uh, bringing a balanced attack uh, in 2019 and not those Run, 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 pass, punt. Run, 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 pass, punt. Run, 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 pass, punt. You know, like, we need true balance. And and if you want, you know, and it was hard to get true balance with Blake Bortles because Blake Bortles was one of, he just could not even throw a football last year. Like, that was the big thing. He couldn't even, he couldn't make any throws. He couldn't do any of that. 
But with the faith that this coaching staff has in them and how much they really seem to be behind this Nick Foles move, this Nick Foles signing, and Nick Foles is a guy and a quarterback, I think that they're going to be willing. And, you know, with the flip in the uh, Foles connection, which the, he talked about a lot, and he was really excited to be here uh, with him. And that was also one of the uh, deal breakers, Foles said, for him to come to Jacksonville was his connection with Flip and to be able to come into an offense that he already knows, into a locker room with some talent and things like that. So, you know, this offense hopefully is going to be changing and this offense will be designed to fit Nick Foles' strengths. Uh, I don't know how much uh, the RPO is going to actually be in Jacksonville if that's, you know, we're going to totally make that switch. But if we were, I think we have good running backs to do that. Uh, I think we have the speedy wide receivers to do that as well. And uh, hopefully with the addition of maybe somebody like Golden Tate, uh, then that RPO offense can really take off uh, in Jacksonville, especially when if the Jags go and they extend uh, Corey Grant. If they sign Corey Grant back, uh, you've seen how well the RPO worked in Jacksonville when we played the New England Patriots. Uh, with Corey Grant, it was almost unstoppable, and, you know, Corey really fits that that role. He would also, you know, if Corey Grant was to go somewhere, he should go to Philly. He would, he would fit in very well in Philly. That's a little off topic, but he'd fit really well in Philly. But if this offense is trying to be more RPO heavy to fit Nick Foles' strength, I think they should try and sign Corey Grant back, because I think Corey Grant would be an excellent, an excellent addition to, uh, to that offense and uh, I think Leonard Fournette will be as well and I think the wide receivers we have now would fit this kind of scheme flip is trying to run uh pretty well especially because you know if, if Foles is going to be doing what he does and he takes shots uh we do have a couple of guys that could be deep threats uh D.D. Westbrook DJ Chark both of those guys are speedy and could uh, take the top off the defense but you know you got to really rely on Chark uh D.D. was pretty reliable all season long you got to really rely on DJ Chark to be able to step up his game a little bit and to catch the ball because he's a great vertical threat it's just his hands man like Bortles was even giving him good balls that were just hitting him right in the hands and he would drop them. It was probably just basic basic shock because he was like, wow, Blake actually threw a ball on the money. But, you know, if Charge really going to need to step up his play if he's going to be effective in this offense. But I think Foles is going to bring the best out of these wide receivers again because, you know, he can make throws. He can make the short throws, the intermediate throws, the deep balls. And that's something that we haven't seen a quarterback being able to do in a long, long time, whether you are a true Blake Bortles guy like myself. I was a, I'm a huge true Blake Bortles guy. But you could tell that this offense was really kind of held back because of the limitations Blake Bortles brought. And all those limitations that Bortles brought, Nick Foles doesn't have any of those. And I think that that's why this offensive scheme and this offense is going to be 10 times more successful with Foles in it because he can make all those throws. Uh, whether you can debate the fact that he is getting paid too much money, I can agree with that. And if that's your take on things, then that's your take on things, but you got to step back at one point and look at him as a player. This guy came from the Rams where he was just going to be completely done with his career, went all the way back to Philly to be a backup, found the love for football again, and now he's here. He's looking to win another Super Bowl ring, maybe, you know, this time as a full starting quarterback uh, for a team all year long. And it's really exciting to see. And one of the other biggest things, not only does Coughlin – I'm Codwell, Doug Marone, Flip even, want this guy in Jacksonville. You can really, really tell Nick Foles wants to be in Jacksonville. You know, he told a lot of things, and, you know, just in the beginning of his press conference, talking about how him and his wife are excited to move to Jacksonville and that he's excited to be a leader uh, of this team that's already so talented. He says, you know, he's he's excited to take on the opportunity to be the Jaguars quarterback after, you know, years and years of not having a guy that this franchise can rely on. You can look back, you know, even before Bortles, Garrett, Henny, you know, and Garrard was the last probably most reliable one. And Garrard, uh, you know, that's that's been a talk a lot lately is about David Garrard saying, you know, he would have been, he would have gave us a Super Bowl if he had better weapons, all this and all that. Let's see how Nick Foles does. You know, if we, we need to give Nick Foles some weapons because we don't want to give Nick Foles the David Garrard treatment where, you know, we look back in two, three years after his contract expires and say, man, if we just went out and got some more targets, Nick Foles would have won a Super Bowl with us. You know, we can't let that happen. We need to be able to get him targets now. But the main goal for Nick Foles is to obviously bring a championship here to Jacksonville. And I think he does have the opportunity and the potential to do that here. Especially with the, you know, the, the man. It just seems like he wants to play for us. Like he really, really 
um, you know, when a lot of people get paid, you know, you can kind of tell that they're they're excited to get paid, but they're not really going to be, you know, all they're not going to put all their effort really into it on the field. But with Nick Foles, it looked different. Nick Foles didn't talk about the money once. He didn't talk about the contract once. He just talked about how much he wants to get out there, help this organization win, and help bring it a Super Bowl. I mean, he did it for Philadelphia. He was a national hero in Philadelphia, you know, and he could be a national hero here in Jacksonville as well uh, if he brings that same exact magic to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And like I said, you know, he really wants to be here. This is a team that he said from the get-go that this is an organization that he wants to play for and he wants to be able to help it succeed. And another, and I think the biggest takeaway is that he's a team guy. And I think that's why the coaches love him so much. Because if you look at the coaches we have, we have old gritty coaches that are all about non-individual playing. You know, they're about team football. That's the era they grew up in was team football. You know, a yard and a cloud of dust football. And Nick Foles seems to be that guy. You know, he's coachable. He can do anything. He'll do anything you want him to. You know, you want him to hand off the ball, he'll hand it off. You want him to pass the ball, he'll pass it. And, you know, and he's just a general leader as well. Like, he's coachable. He can listen. He listens to the coaches. He's, you know, seems like he's in love with the coaches. But he can also be out there and be a leader. And he wants to be a leader for this team. Not necessarily like how Bortles was. Because Bortles was kind of a weak leader, if you yeah, honestly. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people say that he was a little more verbal in the huddle. But, you know, he just he's not that guy, man. He doesn't seem like that guy. But Nick Foles, a guy that's been on a Super Bowl team. And, you know, the, the, the Eagles had to believe in him. You know, because, you know, he made that incredible playoff run, got him to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl. That's a leader, you know, and he really wants to come here and bring all the qualities that he had in Philadelphia and translate it to Jacksonville to be able to lead the Jacksonville Jaguars to its first Super Bowl. The same thing that he did to Philadelphia and the Eagles. And after this press conference, I found myself thinking, this is my quarterback. This is the guy that I'm going to rely on now. This is the guy I'm going to be rooting for. This is the guy I'm going to stand for. Like, you know, this press conference really solidified the fact that we should all be all in on Nick Foles. Like, there should be nobody that's still anti-Nick Foles, thinks he doesn't have it, thinks he can't do anything, you know, especially after this press conference and, you know, him spilling his heart out about how much he really wants to help this organization. I think all that talk should go to rest and everybody should be behind Big Dick Nick. And we paid him. We did pay him. But we had to pay him one mil for every inch of that dick because you know Big Dick Nick ain't taking anything less than that. And that was my biggest takeaways from Nick Foles' press conference. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevin Pixley. Oh, at True Talks as well. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.